Welcome back to Tabletop That. This week, uh, we're going to look at doing some entryways. Here I have a 28 millimeter miniature. Comes in at about an inch and a half, something like that. So I'm going to make the entrance way two inches tall. So I'm stuck here during the quarantine uh, with a pandemic going on. And I've just about ran out of uh, my regular materials. So um, I have a big old box of scrap stuff. So I pulled that out, pulled some pieces out, and I thought, you know, entryways. That's a nice entry level project. But if you're also an expert, maybe you haven't gone down these particular rabbit holes that I'm getting ready to jump down into. And today I think I'm going to create three different entryways, different styles. Some similarities between them because uh, I'm building these for a cave system. Um, I thought I would try several different, experiment a little bit and try several different uh, approaches out. There's my guy. He can walk clearly through that entryway. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be a uh, Stonehenge type entryway with some runes on it. You see where I cut that there at an angle? I didn't want a clean square cut. I wanted to give it a little bit of character. So here we go. That's a neat little entryway there. So now that I've got my basic form cut out, I'm going to add some texture to it. This is a pretty brilliant uh, way that you can add texture to your foam. Basically just get some aluminum foil, crumple it up, and roll it over the uh, foam. Get the edges and the sides, and it gives this dimpled stone-like pattern. Everybody does this in the crafting miniature world realm. At least everybody I'm aware of. It's a pretty common technique. And after you're done there, you just glue the legs to the capstone and you are in good shape. Now to add a little bit more character to this entryway, I'm going to go through and I'm going to chip out different pieces of it all the way around. Uh, I maybe got a little crazy here. Um, we'll see when we look at the final product, but... Basically, a bunch of chips out of the stone block where maybe it had been quarried and uh, they weren't too uh, they weren't too precise with their cuts. Maybe in the next step here, you can see I'm basically just making different rune type markings um, up and down the blocks. And, you know, I'm not really uh, using any particular alphabet or anything. I'm just random marks that I think look like they'd be runes. And I go up and down one side and across. And then I do the other side, flip it over so that it can be used and seen. The runes can be seen on both sides. And then I go back and give it a mod podge coating. And then after the Mod Podge, with black paint mixed in, I uh, give it a dark gray base coat. And there we go. After that, it's time for some draw brushing. I started out with some gray. And I actually did two coats of draw brushing. The first one I did with gray. And the second one I did, I think, with a suede. Now with dry brushing, you're basically just getting, uh, loading your paintbrush up with paint and then taking as much of it out of, out of the brush as you can on a paper towel. And this way, the paint just pretty much hits the high spots. And you can see on the left there where I've dry brushed and on, on the right there where I haven't. Uh, and maybe you can see it pretty good here too where you're getting this different uh, dimension to the stone. 
and there I am with the suede at the end there and the last step here is to do a black wash now both the Mod Podge and the black wash I got from uh, Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft it's a great channel and you should check it out he's got a lot of good videos over there I'll put a link down below for his channel so in the second um, entryway I wanted to go with something a little bit more crude and earth like something where maybe it was a natural cave entrance or um, really roughly cut out so here I could be a little bit crazy with the uh, utility knife and just go to town so I started this out with no specific idea just that I wanted it to be much more I wanted it to be rougher more gouges deeper so I go at it several times really hitting it hard with the knife and after I do that I look at it and I'm not really happy with it it's not really quite enough I want something a little bit more so I look around and I find these little small pieces I'm not really sure what to do with them in my scrap box and I said to myself self let's make a bunch of stones so I'm making stones just by ripping them apart and I'm came up with a little pile of these stones and once I had quite a few of them in play um, it was just a matter of grabbing the glue gun and going to town and this really isn't as hard as it seems it's probably took me five minutes to do this it's really pretty easy it's the next step that took quite a while I ran out of uh, ran out of little stones. It doesn't take very long to make up a new batch because basically you're just ripping apart little pieces of foam. Once I had enough on here, um, we get on to that step I really don't care for all that much. It's the Mod Podge step. Now basically Mod Podge looks like uh, white glue. It's not the same as white glue. It's different. Once it sets up, it you know you add water to it, it won't thin out. Um, and then I just mix a little black paint in there. This is essentially what Jeremy uses for his uh, base coats on a lot of his stuff. It helps protect it and gives it that you know black base coat you don't have to use black you could use brown or gray or whatever else if you wanted a different uh, color for your base coat I just tend to use black um, and build up from there not on all things sometimes I use a brown this was actually a really hard step just getting making sure you got into all those little crevices uh, pain in the butt after I did that I laid down a coat of dark gray and maybe you're starting to see a pattern it's the Mod Podge followed by the dark gray I started to see a pattern myself and thought well if we're going to experiment we really should experiment so I pulled out some brown had a big bottle of it laying around and thought let's go more for those uh, other tones those brown tones so initially I was thinking a heavy dry brush which is what I started with here, as you can see. After I got into it, I really did not like that gray peeking out. So I picked up a smaller brush and I started getting some of the brown down into the crevices. After that, I got some golden brown and some tan and did a couple of dry brush coats and then finished it up with the uh, black wash.
Now for doorway number three. Um, so I was thinking uh, in this cave system, I'm going to build some tracks, some mining cart tracks. So I wanted to have those entryways that you would find in a mine where you have these wood supports holding up the uh, the roof and the sides of the and the sides of the uh, cave walls. So I thought that would be pretty neat. I started basically with the same piece. I started with the very first um, doorway and instead of cutting it into half long ways, I kept it the same size, that big chunky size. And essentially made it the same height, around two inches with the capstone on the top, but this time I made the capstone pretty square. And then I cut out these little pieces of basswood, I think is what you call it. Uh, you find it in the craft stores. And then I went back over the stones and started chipping away at them, just like I did with the, uh, the first and second doorway. Give it a little bit more character there. I kept the uh, edges sharp, I think, on, on the outsides, but on those inside walls, uh, I gave it a little bit more like it had been cut through and then I just glued it in place now the top beam wood beam I put in place to make sure that when I glued down the legs um, they were the right distance away from each other so when it came time to put it into place I could do that here I'm marking out the side beams and I cut a couple of those And then back to the aluminum foil to add textures. Now I could have done this before I glued it, but I forgot. And it's not a big deal. You can do it after. Uh, to add a little bit more to these wood beams, um, I went ahead and carved them out a little bit. So they looked like they were more of a rough hewn um, timbers. And then I used the X-Acto knife to put some... Um, texture in each of the uh, timbers there a quick little paint job I just did a single paint collar because after the black wash I feel like you'll lose any detail you might have in there again with the Mod Podge followed by the uh, dark gray and then after the dark gray here I do the same thing I think I went with uh, the dry brushing. But before I did the dry brushing, I probably should have done the dry brushing after I put this base coat down. But instead of doing the dry brushing, I think I was a little excited. Uh, so I went ahead and put the timbers into place. All right, that's good enough. Here we go and just uh, use some hot glue and put those timbers into place. And there you go. Now, you know, looking at this, I think I should have made it wider. Um, that looks a little narrow for like a, a mine, but eh, good first try. And here are our final results. Let's see what they look like. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the uh, video. I hope uh, you picked up some tips here. Go out there and make your own entryways for your cave systems or your dungeons. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Leave some comments down below. And again, thanks for stopping by. Until next week, have fun and keep crafting.